So hey, welcome to this quick episode of the EV Revolution show. Well, I'm here at Yorkdale Mall in Toronto, where as you can see behind me that they've opened up a pop-up Nissan store. And this is to premiere the Nissan Aria, as well as the three, uh, the, as the new Z as well from uh, Nissan. So I thought I'd pop down and just have a quick look at the Aria in person. And just to give you my quick uh, uh, impressions. And if you are in the Toronto area, this is here for the month of February. So I'd encourage you to come to Yorkdale Mall check it out you can see it you can't sit in it and really do a lot with it but you can get a good visual cue of what it looks like how big it is and what it offers so let me go check it out I'm inside the, the Nissan pop-up store here at Yorkdale Mall. As you can see, I'm gonna do a quick walk around on the Aria. I can't get an official tour and employee on camera because I haven't, I didn't go through the process to book this. This is just kind of spur of the moment, uh, but I'll do the best I can to give you some initial information on the Aria. So here's the front of the Aria. As you can see, Nissan has carried over the V-Motion design grill uh, for this vehicle. So it's very nice that the lighted Nissan symbol is standard across all the trim mo models. Um, so as you can see, they have nice uh, light package with the mini uh, LED D uh, light package. Um, I believe that that top strip is the DRLs, but I'm confirming on that. You've got fog lights here. Uh, I've got multiple uh, radar sensors as well. You can see one on this side and there's another one on the passenger side here as well. Uh, but just a nicely sculpted vehicle with a nice front, a good size. You know, it's about the size of a road if you want to compare that to uh, an internal combustion vehicle that's on the road today. But very nice lines in it. And in person, it actually looks a lot better than, than what you'll see uh, on the website. Now, this particular model is actually a pre-production uh, Japanese model. So it's a right-hand drive that they're showing here in the display center today. And it actually has two ports. It has a Chatham port on one side and a CCS port on the other side. The North American spec vehicles will only come with the CCS fast charging. It will not come with Chatham. So this is only because it's an Asian spec vehicle and they put both ports, uh, and it's a pre-production. So they put both ports on it. As you can see from the passenger side, technically on this one, it's the CCS port, but we would get the CCS port most likely on the driver's side uh, for the North American versions. That'll be confirmed when we actually see one, but I'm, that's what my guess is right now is that's what we'll see. So 19 inch wheels are standard on the uh, initial platforms and I think upgrade to 20 is uh, an option if I believe. But again, you have to check out the Nissan uh, USA or Nissan Canada website for that. And again, nice sculpted lines on this vehicle. As you can see, it's got a good arrow. Uh, flow to it, a uh, good height for easy entry, a nice sloping roof. Um, you know, just really good looks on the uh, on the side of this vehicle. Nice lines, uh, big doors. Uh, I, I will get uh, my helper to open the doors on the other side when we get there, just so you can see how wide they open. If we walk around at the back, you see a nice sculpted rear with a power hatch, of course, that opens up to a pretty pretty standard boot size now that we're seeing in this mid mid to upper level SUV. Again, this is roughly the size of the Nissan Rogue. So it's very similar from a footprint and from a uh, interior space. So we do see uh, some of the boots being a little higher, not as deep as some of the others. Now, one thing that this trunk has is the hideaway storage capabilities. So you can lift up these panels. Maybe uh, you could just uh, lift that up as long as I don't get you in frame, but I can get your hand in frame. So you can see that there's storage there. Now you do lose that on, a, on the all wheel drive. So this is a front wheel drive single motor, but on the all wheel drive, you do lose that capability for the hideaway because the motor is there. So the, the trunk, uh, the bottom of the trunk would be exactly as you see it here on the all wheel drive. 60-40 rear with a tonneau cover as well on that, a boot cover, and there's your power switches for for the trunk. Uh, nice uh, low uh, entry. Uh, the entry point is uh, oh, just a couple inches above my knee, so easy to lift up over groceries, things like that, to slide in and out. Again, your array of sensors, 
for the all-around sensors and radar suites that uh, Nissan provides through ProPilot and the safety tools. And one more thing, the Platinum and Premier versions will have the motion-activated uh, rear hatch opening, so you just kind of take your foot here and slide slide somewhere where the sensor is and it or and it will pop up uh, something like that all right so here's the driver's cockpit as you can see now remember again this is a japanese asia spec model so it's right hand drive just reverse it for north america but you'll get a sense of the controls uh, you can see some of the controls there it's a mix of uh, standard buttons with levers you've got steering wheel mounted controls uh, nice uh, memory settings this has the memory the power seats of course for both so you have uh, memory one and two memory settings nice trim ambient lighting packages are fairly standard across most of the trims as well but just a very nice comfortable cockpit experience the center console it's interesting with the new shifter module now it does have i can't see it here but it has some haptic controls going on so they're flush buttons that will provide haptic feedback when you push them it's on the center console um, and i think on the rear as well in the back seat some, sorry on the uh, uh, center console for the hvac they're just uh just here to the left of the steering wheel so it's just a nice something different that nissan's come up with just to really kind of soften the experience for drivers in these vehicles to make things a little easier uh, 12.3 uh, displays across, so you've got your driver's binnacle that's connected to your secondary infotainment system. Uh, this is a new software that they're running in this vehicle. It's not a carryover. My understanding, it's not a carryover from the Leaf. This is a brand new software engagement that they built for this vehicle. Uh, so it should be much more robust, obviously have some form of uh, over-the-air update capabilities and so forth. But uh, just a very nice place uh, to be in the vehicle. Center console is open. It's not a ton of storage, yeah. but there's wireless charging with a little bit of storage again, some cup holders. Uh, there's that haptic controls. And one thing is that the console does move. It's powered, so you can move it forward up a few inches and back. So again, works with uh, a rear passenger room. Again, flat floor on this, folks. A flat floor in the front, so there's a lot of space. And there is some storage underneath uh, the front console, as you can see there for some other smaller items. But again, lots of room for people and things. And also the rear view camera, there's an option for some of the upper spec where it's actually a digital camera. Now it's, this is blocked because we have the trunk facing the ceiling, but you have that option like you have in some other vehicles where it's actually a real life camera feed that'll come in for your rear view mirror. Also, uh, these do have a heads up display option as well. Now you can't show it to you because you can't get in the vehicle, but you know what they look like. Check out the website. It has uh, route uh, controls, speed limits, uh, a lot of indicators, all kinds of instrumentation, blind spot, uh, notification, and all that stuff comes up on the HUD as well. So it's a nice feature for those that like heads up displays. So here's the one of the rear doors open. It's almost a 90 degrees open. So it's a very cavernous and easy entry point for rear passengers to get in and out of. As you can see, nice wide entry. Shouldn't be able to bonk your head too much on the roof line. Um, all the roof lines slope and obviously they sit a little higher because of the battery pack so sometimes it is a little harder to get in but as you can see pretty cavernous a rear seat you can seat five people comfortably in this because it is wide enough um, this particular model has the uh, heated rear seats as well which you can see on the middle console i'm going to zoom in a bit there and all this stuff is on the nissan website so you can see bigger pictures than what i'm showing you but nicely equipped uh, model here uh, this has the leather package and some other goodies but again i'm trying to just give you a sense of space and uh, what's available from a comfort for passengers well, i think i wanted to mention some of you may have noticed that this has two shark fin antenna on it again because this is a japanese spec vehicle that's standard but in north america there'll be one center mounted shark fin, a shark fin antenna that will have your radio and uh, all your data stuff so just continuing with some of the the walk around from the visuals again one more time as you can see it's getting busy in here so my time is coming to an end but nice clean lines uh, i was told that the uh, the horizon line which is just called here that you see points to the future which is a positive message that came from the japanese culture so you can take that as any way you want but this is folks in uh, real life and seriousness this is a really nice looking vehicle um, i think it looks a, a lot nicer in person than you do see on the videos and on camera uh, very nice well thought out cockpit uh, we'll get more specs of course i mean there's a lot of specs already online about this and then at some point this spring or the summer potentially even early fall 
Um, we'll get into doing some uh, press reviews of this vehicle and being able to drive. But Nissan is promising to start deliveries in the fall of this year on pre-orders. They have opened their reservation books now, so I encourage you to, uh, to check it out if you're interested, both the U.S. and the Canadian sites for this. And hopefully we'll get Canadian pricing soon. Apparently we should be getting that uh, anytime probably by this fall, by this spring, excuse me. So stay tuned for that. Right, all wrapped up with my tour. Hopefully you enjoyed that, folks. Just a quick snapshot on the new Aria. Um, I think it's a great winner for Nissan, and hopefully when the price it comes out, uh, we'll be pleasantly surprised with that. So again, thanks very much for watching. If you're not subscribing on YouTube, please do. That would be great. Appreciate Patreon, of course, as always. Uh, always humbled by that. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. We're still having to wear masks here, but hopefully we might be relaxing some stuff soon. And until the next episode, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.